Well, hey there. Hi there, ho there. We made it. <laughs> you made it. You made it. Just Man, barely. <laughs> if you're I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> yeah, if you're listening to this live on the radio and uh, you're on 23, that is a mess. <laughs> Welcome to my life. That's yeah. why I go the day. back way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, somebody had told me that they were like, the construction's not supposed to start until 10 a.m. And um, it definitely started earlier this morning. <laughs> but we're yeah. here. They wanted to get a head start. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You hear Gage on the board. Good morning, Gage. Good morning. Glad you made it. We've got Molly myers Lebedee. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. And our guest this morning is Karen Callen. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. It's so nice to have you, our president of the Friends, just in your final term. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Wow! I was like, do we need? We need Speechless. to sing a song or something like this. I mean, I let's, don't. I think let's you, not talk about this. Aww. You were there when I started, so I, I don't know. know what this is like without you, Karen. Well, I don't. We are looking for another president. You I I might will still be around. You for might a while. still be around. <laughs> don't get me out of here yet. All right, all right. We won't push you out the door yet, but we will talk about uh, some things happening with the friends of the library. The second half of the show, we'll talk mm-hmm. about some things coming up. Some things that just happened, and we'll see what's what's coming up in the future. So um, let's talk about something that we've read lately. I love doing this part. I love doing this it's part, It's so too. much fun. What? Have you read something, Molly? I have. Actually, I've been reading a lot of short things. Nice. So I literally am going through my audio list and looking to see what's the shortest amount of time because I am so far behind on my Goodreads challenge. Yeah. So those of you who do the Goodreads challenge, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you pick a number of books that you're reading for the year, and then that's what you're trying to accomplish. And I picked 100 because I'm an idiot. That's a lot. It's a lot. So then you start looking for your (laughs) two, three-hour audio books that you can listen to on your way to work. So I found one that was actually the exact book I needed in my life right now. I read a book called Bad Vibes Only and Other Things I Bring to the Table by an author named Nora McErnie. Nice. And it's short little memoirs all blended in. She's definitely probably a little bit older than I am. So she's got a lot of those 80s and 90s memories. And what I love about her is she's so raw about imperfection. She's really raw about her emotions. Um, And it's, it's funny because we all live these hard lives, right? And she's talking about like all the bad vibes that come through and just sort of going with it. Like it's it's a happy book called Bad Vibes Only. It's like a happy that. book. Um she's written quite a few other things, but this is really also on our I love how it's written here in this um description. She turns her eye on our aggressively, oppressively optimistic culture, our obsession with self-improvement and what it really means to live authentically in the online age. Um, I love what she has to say about dieting. I think she and I have been on the same dieting journey from, you know, for those of you who remember the 80s and 90s and the Slim Fast. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. That whole diet journey she gets into, Weight Watchers and all the things that are out there. And if you're young enough, the magazines, the Teen Vogues. and Talks about all that, too. The images and Mm -hmm. all of these things, the chaos that we've lived in. Uh, What it used to mean to be a kid. An unplugged kid, the amazing, you know, adventures of being just outside, that drinking out of the water hose, that feral childhood that I feel like we had in the 80s and the 90s. (laughs) I remember... Mom just being like, <laughs> Karen's like, I don't know yeah. about Farrell. <laughs> Mom was like, go outside and I don't want to see you back in this house all day. Mm-hmm. Like if you needed water or something, she didn't let us. Of course, we did really drink out of the, you know, hose, yeah. especially if the sprinklers had been running. <laughs> um, we did just, but I lived in this back alley with nobody watching me for most of my, except for my sisters, which that was just a bad idea mm-hmm. for most of my childhood. And I remember my childhood so fondly Mm -hmm. but we were we uh were not allowed to come in till the street lights went on so everybody (laughs) talks about like come back when the street no don't come don't come until until you see the street lights (laughs) so (laughs) but you know i make it sound my mom loved being a mom we had wonderful times together but she really did like the dirty loud children climb trees and you know went in playhouses and taught kittens to swim in the river and i just Mm. this book 
I don't know about that. One. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that. yeah, well, really didn't work kittens out well. could swim. Oh, just for the record. And if you live on the Ohio River and you're a kitten, <laughs> it seemed only practical to my kid brain that you needed to learn to swim when you were little, or you could get in trouble if there was a flood. So we <laughs> taught kittens to swim. We'd go out on a dock, oh. and we'd put the kittens in, and then swim down, and we'd pick it back up. We'd make sure it didn't drown. Mm-hmm. We walked Good. right with it. Good. Did and you then take we, its little paws and make it do? They swimming already things? know how to do that. Cats oh, okay. actually can swim they loved it i'm gonna need to see so, i'm gonna go TikTok like deep dive this this well, afternoon <laughs> good luck because this was the 80s and 90s there is no video nobody gave us access to an expensive camera so True. this is all between my sisters myself and some of those neighborhood kids i won't even name <laughs> but bad vibes only for anybody who had a feral childhood and can get frustrated in some of this world she just says the stuff that is kind of running through my brain. It mm-hmm. was, some people have not reviewed this well. I have to say the reviews are all over the place. Yeah. It was the right book at the right time for a Molly. Who is the author again? <laughs> it is Nora McErnie. Say it. Yeah, I said that right. M-C- Nora McErnie. M C I N E R N Y. And it's right. Bad Vibes Only and Other Things I Bring to the Table. If you're just sort of Gen X and in the need of a little boost on yeah. how you're feeling about the world right now, I highly suggest it. Awesome. You said it was a pretty quick audiobook. It was a really quick. It was two or three hours. It was very, oh, very yeah. short. That's I think that one may have even been my two hour. Highly consumable. Highly consumable <laughs> and highly needed for some of us. <laughs> I laughed. I cried. I did it all. <laughs> In two hours. That's amazing. Yeah, she did a great job. Memoirs, I'm, I'm, I'm a memoir girl. Yeah. I love a good memoir, especially if it's my world. What are you getting into, Karen? Guess. Is it Lisa C? Yeah. <laughs> just a hunch. Although I did bring a couple others just in case. Okay. But, um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about Lisa C later on, but um, her latest book, um, Lady Tan's Circle of Women. Yes. And Lisa C came to visit um, at our New Liberty Library last week. Um, no, Wednesday. And um, the book, she does Chinese um, fictional history about women probably better than most anybody else. Her research is impeccable. Um, She talks about, this book is about a lady who was born in the 1500s in China and becomes a doctor when women couldn't walk out of their house, especially the upper class women, more than three steps out of their house because Confucius said, that an educated woman was a woman of trouble and no good. Mm. And so Mm. if they Lloyd would agree with that. (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) I never knew Confucius was like that. I always heard Confucius said, well. We hear his, we hear what we want, what we like. heard that is his wisdom. Never meet your role models. He, yeah. Yeah. He was not nice to ladies. He did not like women at any stretch of the imagination. Mm. But she was born in a, in a upper class family. And um, she, her, she, her father, uh, her mother died when she was very young because she had an infection in her foot because of the foot binding stuff that mm. they did, Ugh. which yes. again is something I do not understand. But, mm-hmm. um, and so her father was traveling, so she gets sent to live with her grandparents, her paternal grandparents. And her paternal grandmother is a physician who practices, who's learned from generations of her parents and her parents' parents and stuff. And in China at that time, male doctors could not talk to female patients. They couldn't look at them. Mm-hmm. They couldn't be in the same room. So if you had a problem, the doctor would come, stand outside, and then say to somebody like your husband or somebody, gee, what's wrong with her or give me her symptoms. And then she would say, my symptoms are such and such. But we all know how that goes. Mm -hmm. By the time they left the person to go tell the doctor, the symptoms had changed. There's no getting any kind of help for these people. And especially with childbirth, because doctor, male doctors couldn't touch blood. And so it, I mean, it was just very interesting. So yeah. she becomes, a, mm-hmm. um, so she studies under her grandmother. She learns a lot of stuff. But then there's an arranged marriage. She has to go live with her in-laws, her mother-in-law and her husband's family. And, of course, mother-in-law doesn't want her doing this because this is not what ladies do. Mm-hmm. 
she has a really um, person that she's a good friend with, Mei Ling, who is a midwife. And so they become friends very early in their childhood, and they go through childbirth, they go through marriages, they go through a, a marriage, they go through um, trying to make a way and deal and do what they love best without um, alienating their culture mm-hmm. and doing mm-hmm. the things that proper ladies do. And and she does it. She finds ways to help, especially the people in their area and their household, because the household is huge, um, helping the women with childbirth and all those kinds of things. And um, there was a scene in the book when she does get permission to be a medical doc, to be a doctor, and her mother-in-law is not feeling well. And her mother-in-law is the one who's kept saying, no, no, no. Mm. Her mother-in-law is not feeling well. And mm-hmm. finally, mother-in-law says, can you help me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she does. And she pulls out a worm out of her mother-in-law's Ooh. body. No way. And they Ugh. describe this. And I'm like, oh, my <laughs> no, God. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm but thinking this is going to <laughs> I'm going to have to be laying down to oh, read this, huh? Oh, my <laughs> Lord. But she ta- I mean, Lisa just brings this whole thing to life. Yeah. And, and she transcends 1500s. I mean, there are yeah. problems that we all have, issues that we all have, right. and she shows how people overcome these issues and the fact that we all need good support systems and circles of people around us who make us better. And that circle of Lady, Lady Tan's mm-hmm. circle of women. Amazing. By Lisa yeah. C. By Lisa C. We will talk more about Lisa's visit in the second half of the show. She did make a really fun announcement, though, that I got to hear, is that the book debuted, like, this week. Yes. Number five on the wow. New York yes. bestseller list. Yes. So we were all, it was a lots of applause mm-hmm. whenever that happened, and she made that announcement. So um, I'm going to give a quick synopsis of a book that I um, have on my want to read list. Nice. I haven't read it yet, but um, I got to hear the author talk. So yes. um, his name is Carlos Whitaker. Carlos, I know from Instagram fame. His Instagram handle is at Los Wit, L-O-S-W-H-I-T. <laughs> and he is just a very like kindness centered person. Oh. He is not, he's not toxic optimism. He is just kindness centered. He is all about, um, and so the book is called How to Human. And I might have talked about it before, but I got to hear I got to hear Carlos last Sunday, and so I was really excited to to talk more about his book, How to Human: Three Ways to Share Life Beyond What Distracts Us, Divides, and Disconnects Us. Mm-hmm. And so, what Carlos is all about is that there are things that will divide us one hundred percent. Yes. But how can we still be humans under it all? And how can we still uh, react humanely and how can we still be human to each other he he made a really great example when I saw him this past week in Columbus that he um, has a friend who grew up his childhood with you know everything was wonderful as adults and as tensions bubbled to the surface in the past four years um, he realized that he and this friend actually don't see eye to eye on a lot of similar topics and on a lot of topics and he saw their friendship drifting apart because of that. Mm-hmm. And that hurt him because he he didn't want that to be the reason that their friendship drifted apart. And so what he did was when he saw it drifting apart, he was like, "My the friendship is worth salvaging. I want to still be human to this person and ignore the things that divide us and unite over the things that bring us together. One of the things that brought them together was soccer. Yeah. And so he <laughs> said, what if we bought season tickets to... Uh, He lives in Nashville, so to the Nashville soccer teams, I forget what they're called, (laughs) uh, home games. Sports ball! Side by side. And and what what if we attend these together? And the buddy was like, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And he's like, we have a rule. We don't talk about pretty much anything other than soccer. When we're at the soccer games. We can talk about our families, you know. We can talk about soccer. But, like, pretty much everything else is, like, off limits. Yes. (laughs) Um, But he's like. It's great because we still mm-hmm. have that connection, and that's still ways that we can be human to each other. Um, Carlos's um, background is faith-based, so mm-hmm. if you're Christian, you this might be something that's up your alley. But one of the things that he talks about is that he also has people who have no faith, and they still mm-hmm. like his writing. And he said that he did a poll of his uh, Instagram account um, one time, and it's I, I could look up how many followers he has, but it's in the hundreds of thousands. And uh, he did a poll of, you know, who here would, like, actually call themselves Christian? Mm -hmm. And he said it was less than he expected. He said it was, like, 70-30, 80-20. 
seventy percent of people who did call themselves Christian, but he was like, actually, I thought it might have been higher, and so he's like, I'm really happy to see those thirty yeah. and twenty percent of people who are just here because I deliver a positive message mm-hmm. and I deliver how we can be human to each other, and um, so yeah, so Carlos Whitaker, um, how to human. Um, if you've also heard me talk about my favorite Instagram personality, <laughs> America's government teacher, Sharon McMahon, she writes the forward to it. If you <laughs> listen to the audiobook, she narrates her forward as well. So it is um, available now. You can get it anywhere that you read books. Excellent. So with that, we will uh, hop to our break. And on the second half of the show, we'll be with Karen Cowan, Friends of the Library President, and we'll be talking about some things coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back. No no weather this time. The weather is weather, and it's going to be great. Hey, my family back in the New Philadelphia area got no hail, like golf ball hail last night, dense all over the cars. Wow. I, hope, I, I hope my family's doing well. Yeah. Oh, I just yeah. that uh, Northern Ohio got that yeah. mega tornado yeah. Yeah. in Norwalk. Yeah. The weather yeah. is weather, yeah. Weather indeed. is really weather. My weather radios were having a blast last night. <laughs> I saw one strike of lightning at about maybe like 1030, and I opened up my weather app, and it said that the storm would be done in five minutes, and it was. And I was like, well, okay, well, that's yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, it, well, like, I was looking at the warnings, and I was like, it's everybody around us, but, but it's just yeah. skipping yeah. Worthington. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> I even caught a lightning strike on my uh, bird cam, too, last oh, night. Did really you? Cool. Yeah. Your bird Whoa. cam is the <laughs> best. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. I got to do another plug. Is it is it my967.net? Uh, that's right. Go to Gage. Tab uh-huh. and yep. you can see his live feed of his nice bird camp. Plug. They are so cool. <laughs> wild life. The mind is hard. Yeah, absolutely. Critters. I love critters. critters. Uh, me too. Yes. Well, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. There's so much happening tonight uh, mm-hmm. in Delaware, and tomorrow is the uh, St. Mary's Festival. Do you know it's tonight? Uh, Do you know it's tonight? Is it Reaganomics? No. Do you know it's, oh. well, maybe, but okay. no. Do you know it's tonight? What's tonight? It's the new season of Outlander. Oh, you've been waiting. I have been waiting a really long time. Actually, it may be on now for those of you who don't have to go to work on Outlander (laughs) opening night. Brian, take note. This is unacceptable. Yes, it should be a holiday. Speaking of holidays. We've got one coming up on Monday, don't we? We sure do. This is the first year after the um, government declared Juneteenth as a federal holiday. Mm -hmm. Our board of directors went ahead, board of trustees went ahead and said, we'll go ahead and add that to our holiday schedule as well. So the live all library branches will be closed on Monday, June 19th. You know, and I know some people are still learning what Juneteenth is. Mm-hmm. I was really lucky when I was in college. I did an internship at the Indianapolis Children's Museum, mm-hmm. and they used to throw this huge Juneteenth celebration. And the story of Juneteenth is once the Civil War was... Uh, we also have Karen Cowan in the theater, in the studio with us today. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Lots of wonderful things coming up. Most excitingly of the things coming up... June 24th as our very first something. Book sale at the new wonderful Liberty Library. And our our room Mm -hmm. is fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have just, we have, for those of you who have ever been at our book sales, especially if you started with us many years ago, you know, we were lucky if we got them sorted between Fiction and nonfiction. <laughs> maybe, and then maybe when, DVDs or yes. maybe, sets maybe. or VHS. Um, and then when we kind of started getting a little bit more sophisticated, we had fiction, nonfiction, and large print. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go into Liberty, we have the fiction in alphabetical order. Ooh. So that if you want a James Patterson book, oh my gosh, they're all kind of together. Maybe not one right next to the other, but in the same area. Nice. And if you want a biography there's a thing that says biographies with biographies <laughs> well it is amazing so it is like a bookstore now and yes it is and we're talking about maybe opening up a little bit more frequently <gasps> at some point Ooh. in time but our first and so the trial is going to be our first book sale june 24th and we're going to have a media sale and so you can come and check out all of the books we and we do have a lot of books. We were kind of concerned that we weren't going to have enough books. Oh, <laughs> no. no. We have <laughs> books and the community answered. We uh-huh. have, and the library answered. Right. Yes. We have books and we have books. So it's just going to be a fun day and we're just very excited to be in that room and um, just, it's, um, we, we're hoping 
for a whole lot of people, but then we're kind of wondering what we're going to do if we have a whole lot of people. <laughs> right. So we'll send them to the maker space. We'll send them up or the maker studio. Right. We'll send them upstairs to go maybe check out a few books so that we can control the the number of people so everybody can have a good experience yeah. in there. Mm-hmm. There will be a story time that morning. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. people can go hang out at the story oh, time. Very and, cool. Yeah, and then yeah. they can come over and they can shop. And it's going to be really great. This is at the new Liberty Branch Library, the corner mm-hmm. of Holman Stites Roads. Um, not to be confused with the Powell Branch Library. Nope. It is in Powell, but it is the Liberty Branch, yes. Holman Stites mm-hmm. Roads. Yes. Um, this one lasts from 10 to 4. 10 to 3. 10 to 3. So you'll be there uh, So you'll be there during that course of the day. Yes. So, yeah, you can and stop by for the take media cash. sale. We take credit cards. <laughs> we have all the ways we to take your money. We have all the firstborn kids yet, but we could. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I'll let are. my sisters know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I yeah. like their firstborn. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be a whole lot of fun. Yes. You have another book sale coming up back at Delaware. At Delaware um, in the garage and on Friday night. And it's the um, 21st, that's 21st of July in the garage. And then the 22nd, we'll have a media book sale in the uh, garage and in the library, in the community room. The media will be there. Mm-hmm. So, um, yes. We're going to have that. And Delaware, I will say Delaware has gotten a lot more organized. So we do have things between um, fiction, nonfiction, and large print. Mm-hmm. We do have other categories and stuff. So it's not quite as confusing as it used to be. And um, and the last time we had a book sale in Delaware, we had so many people in there. We did have to limit the number of people going in there mm-hmm. because it was absolutely so crowded. Right? Yeah. So, And I will say we have the best prices in the area. How much does it cost yes. to get a book? Or um, how do I get a book? What do I buy at the book sale? You can buy a book. You can buy a lot of books. Um, the way we sell most of them is through our um, buy a bag and fill the bag. Okay. And if you mm-hmm. buy, a, if you're not a member of the Friends of the Library, and being a member of the Friends is different than having a library card, we charge a little bit of money, like $20, $25 for a year. Anyway, you get a bag. You fill that bag, and your first uh, bag is $25, and then when you come back, the next bag, no, 15 I forget the price. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, you buy, it, you buy it by the bag, and then you come back, and you fill that bag up, and it's like $5 less. I think yeah. it's 15 for for. We're looking it up. Anyway. I feel like 15 and 10. That's 15 sounds, and 10 sounds right or 20 and 15 because yeah. I think we just raised the prices. <laughs> and then if you're a member, you get a discount. And so the good thing is that if you come to a lot of our book sales, you want to become a member because your membership is, is, is recouped in about two or three book sales. Oh, yeah. And you can fit. People have fit 20 and 30 books in those book bags. Absolutely. And so... I mean, we are the cheapest people. If you don't, <laughs> if you don't want to buy a whole bag of books, it's a dollar for kids' books, two dollars for um, hardback books. I mean, seriously, and we get bestsellers. People will go to Barnes and Noble or one of the bookstores, buy a bestseller, read it, and bring it to us. And so you're going to get things off the bestseller list that you're going to spend twenty or thirty dollars for at a bookstore. Absolutely. You can get it to uh, from us for two bucks. Two so, bucks. I don't know where the time has went, Gage. Did you do some sort of time travel magic on us this morning? You know, I have magic. You do have <laughs> magic. It is 9.30. How? I, that's what I said. <laughs> I'm but, still looking up the prices for bags. <laughs> it is 9.30. We are at our time. We need to be respectful to our friends yes. at the yes. city of Delaware. Karen, we love you so much. If you want to learn anything about the library, about the friends of the Delaware County District Library. www.delawarelibraryfriends.org. Mm -hmm. Go on our new website. It's got all our info. It's really wonderful. If you want to see what's happening at the library, the only thing that I need to tell you about is tomorrow we have the Medieval Fair at the Ostrander Branch. I will be there. Full regalia. (laughs) Other than that, it'll be rather quiet. uh, But DelawareLibrary.org, DelawareLibraryFriends.org. And that's our time. Thank you, Gage. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Nicole. We'll see you in the stacks. All of a sudden, it's